Um, hello, welcome everybody uh, to Talk Back. Um, and we want to, of course, give our warmest welcome to Shane. Shane and I have met a few times at various charity events, for the, uh, those of us that cruise charity events all the time. Um, and I've seen the movie several times. It's, it's just really a remarkable uh, film, and it's an incredible story. Um, actually, well, I'd love to start about talking about, actually, the film itself. It's a really kind of interesting story about how this ended up being made. Um, I'll let you tell, like, start from your YouTube experience. Right. I mean, the first anniversary of my partner Tom's um, passing was coming up, and I was just dreading that date. And I wanted to, to do something to honor him, and as well as kind of educate people and let them know that you should prepare as much as you can for the unexpected. Because being in our 20s, I, I didn't imagine that maybe Tom was going to die, you know. And. So I posted the YouTube video and it went viral and within like a week it had like two million views, which was insane because the video was 10 and a half minutes long, which is like an eternity on the internet. <laughs> and then I was approached by Linda Bloodworth Thomason, the creator of Designing Women. Um, I don't know if you guys know that show, but um, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Which she's an incredible woman and she said that she wanted to make a documentary and hopefully reach more people than the YouTube video. And then we launched a Kickstarter campaign and 6,500 people from all over the world pledged money and it became the most funded film project on Kickstarter in the history of the website, which is amazing. And so it, it really kind of became the people's film, which is one of the most beautiful things about it. At the end of Bridegroom, the movie, I just love the fact that there's like 10 minutes of credits uh -huh. and it's everyone <laughs> from around the world that, that funded um, the Kickstarter. I, I found it really interesting that, um, that, that when you made the YouTube video, it was just such a testament. It was really touching. It was really raw. Like, I, like as a songwriter, when I'm in a crisis, I write a song because that's what I do. And I know that you and Tom were, um, had spent these years just making videos and, and doing that. And it's like when, it, when you had to express yourself, that's, that was the way to do it visually and to share. Yeah, when I met with Linda, she asked me to give her all the video footage that I had, and she wasn't anticipating the amount that I gave her. <laughs> and she made a couple films for President Clinton, and so she jokes that, that Tom and I had more footage than President Clinton did for the films that she worked on, <laughs> which I hope is not true. But, but I, I think, you know, for our generation, we film everything, and, you know, things that we shouldn't film, and, um, but... <laughs> For me, I'm just so grateful that, that we had all that footage, um, just as a way you know, that I can just watch it and remember Tom. And I think that it's kind of what makes the documentary special as well, that you can actually see him and see video footage and not just photos. So. And so much, they were, they, would you, if you haven't, who all here has seen the whole movie? Okay, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> but it, it, I really recommend seeing it all, but it's just, they were um, embarking on sort of a, around the world adventure, you were gonna go. Yeah, we wanted to hit all the wonders of the world. And, and for me, I hadn't really traveled, just you know, being in Montana, the one trip I took like all the way through high school was to visit my grandparents in Arizona, which I love them, but it's, you know, it's not that exciting. Um, and I'm so, from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I met Tom, it just became a goal of ours to, to travel the world together. And when I dreamt about traveling someday, the idea of traveling with someone is what was appealing. So it was just incredible to, to have him to travel with and, and see the world. I was also super curious about, um, because uh, you know, it, was, it was a very tough situation with Tom's parents, and you know, which so many people unfortunately live through. Um, just as a, an, in the filmmaking, there's so much archival footage and photos of Tom. So I was curious as to, since with no cooperation and no contact with his family, how did you acquire that? Well, when we started to make the documentary, I was, I was worried about you know, how Tom's family was gonna react, but I really had hoped that 
they would participate, but his parents didn't respond to numerous requests. And it's, it's interesting, because with a documentary, you would think that you need the people's permission to use photos and video, but we, we didn't. And so we were able just to use whatever we wanted, and um, there's nothing that they could really do about it. Was that, did Tom have the, uh, that in his position? Um, well, a, a lot of the photos I received from some of his relatives, like the younger ones, uh, but for the most part, Tom just had all these images on his computer. So are there other people in Tom's family um, that you are in touch with, that it's not so? I, I am in touch with some of the relatives. For a period of time, they didn't want me to, to tell anyone, but I have become friends with his sister um, and his niece and nephew, which is pretty cool, just to have their support. Because for me, if his own relatives are supporting the film, then it just makes me feel like I am doing the right thing by sharing the story. Um, if uh, When you see the movie, and most of you, are, I'm sure, were here for the sermon, the um, after Tom passed away, there, there was, you know, it, it was a complete shut out of Shane by the family, and, and like, like I'm from Alabama, and I, I just, you know, and being from the South, like I've witnessed so much of that. It's, it's very, very sad, but the, the, in the movie, you know, just telling the truth and telling the story, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty brutal, the way that Shane was treated by Tom's parents. And I was really curious about, like, not only how you felt, but if there was any, any reaction that you even heard of, because when, when, when you're even accurately portraying just telling the truth and the facts about what happened to you, um, it, it doesn't, you know, to uh, us, it doesn't really put them in a very good light, you know, and just the amount of, of prejudice and bigotry. But sometimes people that are holding prejudice and bigotry don't see themselves as prejudice or bigots. Um, they see themselves as right, you know. Um, so I, I was just curious, when you were making the film and knowing, um, and you're such a kind, kind person, about telling the truth and what happened to you about, you know, also how that would be making them feel or how they would look or if they would be angry, because I know that, the, you know, the, his dad could be quite threatening as well. You know, I, I mean, I think for me, just so much of my life, I never stood up for myself and I was just always so ashamed of being who I am. And so there was something empowering about just finally saying like enough's enough and I'm gonna to share my experience and not, not worry so much what his parents think. And for me and the director, we didn't want to, to demonize them, we just wanted to tell the truth. And so I feel like as long as you just tell the truth, then you, you can't go wrong. And even if they, if they see it and they don't agree with how they're portrayed or they don't think that's who they are, um, I guess that's, you know, that's on them. I just hope that they, they can watch the film at some point and just kind of see where you know, I'm coming from and see that they weren't honoring Tom for, for who he was. Do you think they've watched the film? I don't know. It's, I mean, we sent them a copy of the film, and I think they actually might be surprised because you know, we talk about all the great things that they did for him, and I think that Tom's mom really did love Tom, and she just struggled with that just like a lot of parents do, especially because they do think that they're doing the right thing. But we got the film into Redbox, which is pretty incredible because it's in a lot of small towns that we wouldn't have been able to, to reach probably. And I found out that there was a Redbox location really close to his parents' house. And they live in like a town of like a few thousand people. And so I kind of I kind of liked the idea that the film was right there. So I'm like, go to Walgreens. Oh, then we're, hey, there's bridegroom. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm rattling off questions, but Joey right here is ready and prepared to take this and hand it to anyone out there that has a question for Shane. And just really fast too, I want to um, give a shout out to my one of my best friends, Scott and Colleen, that they were in the documentary. <laughs> and I think for me that's a huge thing. Just being in LA, sometimes. I, you know, friends back home, they, they worried about if I'd find good quality people here because there's just this, you know, perception that people are phony in LA and it's, it's hard to find genuine good people. But 
that's obviously not the case because I've met some of the most incredible people and um, it, this place really became my home, which I didn't really know that that would happen, but it did. I, I feel the same way, especially about this church. I, you know, it's interesting, this, um, we, your, your film is, is important uh, to us and, and you know, a lot of us at the church because one thing that's important to us is to um, daily with our lives and with our presence in the Azure congregation is to really make a stand against prejudice and to make that stand with love. Uh, you know, it's like I always say, don't judge, educate. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, it's, like, I'm just like, I don't know, for me and maybe from our congregation, I'm just like super proud of you, you know, and you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to ask Shane something? Yay. This is Bert Champagne, a wonderful man that does so much good for everybody through APLA and AIDS Walk and everything. Love you, Bert. Do you think that maybe the mother accepted it and it was the father that put the nail in the coffin by saying, no, you couldn't attend the funeral? Do you think it was the machismo? that kind of put the kibosh on anything that the mother had done? Well, through the, you know, the, the six years we were together, Tom would share stories um, you know, about his mom and just kind of the way that she would treat other people and react to situations. And when she came out to California right after he passed away, just listening to her talk to her husband, it was really clear that she was in more control than maybe it, it comes across. Um, but, but I do think that that is part of it. I think she is intimidated by her husband. Um, if he's able to pull a gun on his own son, then that's, there's something frightening about that. But I, I just felt like if she truly, genuinely did care for me like I thought she did, then the year after he passed away, I just would like to think that she would have reached out if she really loved me. And so now I just kind of question if she ever really did care about me. Um, so I'm not sure. Through this entire process, and there might be a deep question, how did your, um, the spiritual side of you help you get through this process? And what, was there any awakening moment? And what was it? When Tom passed away, I was just really confused about why it happened and it, was kind of easy to just be angry with God because I didn't really know who else to be angry with. And it wasn't even so much like, oh, I'm, I'm angry with him because I'm sad that Tom's not here, but just also angry, like, why someone so incredible like Tom, like, why him? Like, why was he taken so soon? And, and for me, posting the YouTube video was kind of like the first moment that I started to just kind of feel better about everything, and, um, and I, I think that that's one of the moments that just became a huge part of like my, my journey and my spiritual journey, and just kind of focusing on more on loving myself and, and not being so afraid of other people and worrying what other people think. And um, I always try to be very respectful of other people's beliefs, and I I, you know, when I travel and speak, I, I don't try to, to tell people what they're supposed to believe. I just try to share my experience and to help them understand. So, yeah, I feel like we all have our own relationship with, with God, and um, it's, it's always growing. Well, I just want to begin by saying thank you for sharing your story, uh, you. from, you know, opening up your life to everyone. I kind of feel like in, whenever there's a tragedy, there can always be good that can come from it. Uh, if we let it, and I think this this film, it will change a lot of hearts and minds, and that's kind of my question. I'm I'm noticing that it's, there's an R rating on this. Um, I I can't quite read what it says, but for language, and I'm just, it seems a shame that you know that kind of excludes a lot of people from being able to see it, and certainly in theaters. Uh, did you all push to get a lower rating, like a PG-13? Yeah, we did. It was it was kind of a. There was a couple like arguments in that process um, with, was it the MPA or what? The yeah, because it's rated R because of the language, but I feel like there's pros and cons with having an R rating. Uh, you know, there's some people that 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 
will watch the film because it is our and like take it more seriously, um, especially for like an independent film, um, if that makes any sense. Um, I think the F word's in there like three times and yeah. And they, they blurted it out earlier, which I was nervous was about to happen. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna walk out. Um, but, but we are in the process of making a version of just, you know, blurring out those, the F word and um, you know, hopefully reaching younger people. But it hasn't stopped them so far from watching it, which is good. I just want to say that I feel like it's Tom's family's loss for not embracing you. My brother passed away at 19 and he was married and I can't imagine a family not being close to his wife. I can't imagine it. For years we've had her and she's a part of our family and I think they're missing out by not embracing you the way that Tom did and getting to know you and having you for all the years ahead in their life. And also, I wanted to thank you for speaking about it because I feel like there's some people in my family that haven't come out or close friends too that maybe are waiting like you did until they're older. And I hope that things like this help. Thank you. That's one thing that's it's been interesting, just I've been traveling the world now and I've, I've met you know, thousands of people, all different ages, and I was just in Mexico and I met a group of men who are all very successful, and um, you know some of them in their 30s and 40s, and they still haven't come out to their families. And it's just, it's just so sad that even now, people still feel like they, they can't come out. And I could kind of understand like younger people where they're you know, at home still, and it's sometimes just not an option to come out, and it's not the right time, but you know, for, for people that are you know, in their 30s, 40s, and their careers established, it's just, you would just think that they wouldn't be as afraid, but it's, it's not the case. You know, I, I often think when, in those kind of situations, because it, it is so sad, it, when anyone can't be their authentic self in any way, um, it is, it's so heartbreaking, and especially when it's something as innocent as to who you love. Um, I think it's up to us to create an environment in our world where there's no, there would be no reason not to come out. It really is up to us. It's up to all of us to continue to try to get change because as sad as it is, it's, this is a very frightening place, especially for you know, a young LGBT kid. It's, it's not like oh, the fear and the anxiety that you had as a child. Unfortunately, these things are not unfounded. And unfortunately, a lot of that hatred comes from churches and from you know, the family of God, which I believe God is love, love is God, A equals A. So I don't know where, why that it resonates from churches. But you know, hopefully, what, what we're going to do is create an environment where no one has to be afraid to be their authentic self no matter what. You know? I'll give you your mic back. I am very curious, as a very big fan of Linda Bloodworth Thomason's work, knowing that she also wrote one of the first episodes of TV that dealt with AIDS as well. I'm curious to know, how did she get involved with the project? How did she get involved with you guys? Well, it's interesting with the director because her mom passed away from AIDS during the AIDS crisis, and so she witnessed firsthand you know, a lot of the hate and discrimination that thousands of gay men faced and she was in her mom's hospital room and the nurses wouldn't even come in they put the pills in a bucket and literally kicked it into her mom's room and around that same time she overheard a nurse say that if there's one good thing that this disease has going for it is that it's killing all the right people and so instead of her you know being angry you know at I guess the gay community and like wanting to like place blame or something, she's used that experience to, to educate other people and she became you know, an, a tremendous ally and she used the TV show Designing Women as you know, a huge platform to, to talk about issues that TV shows at that time would not talk about. And Tom and I met her in Palm Springs at a wedding, at that short window when it was legal here. This was at 2000, eight or something, I think. And we talked about how we want to get married someday, and then 
fast forward to when I posted the YouTube video, she saw it, and that's when she called me and said that she wanted to make the documentary. And so for me, just hearing the story about her mother, I felt like she was the perfect person to, to tell the story, and it wasn't just a Hollywood director wanting to make a movie, and so it just felt right. And I'm just grateful that, that it happened, because when you make a film, I'm, I've never made a film like this, and you just don't know how people are gonna react to it, and you can just hope that it will reach people, and I, I never imagined that it would premiere Tribeca, and then premiere on Oprah's network, and you know, be on Netflix, so it's just, and Redbox, yeah. So it's, it's pretty amazing, um, and I, I think that, that Tom would be so proud of what's happening, and it saddens me when I hear of people reaching out to his family and sending hate mail, and that was never, ever my intention. Um, but I, I just hope, though, that the people like Tom's parents who have struggled with accepting their own children can you know, maybe watch it and, and see that you know, they're not handling it in the right way. So, Thank you for making this film. It's a long time coming. Um, I recall the first time I heard a story similar to yours of two men who had been together for like 40 years, and this was 30 years ago, and one died, and the family cut him off completely, took the house, took the car, took everything. And he was just devastated and left alone. And then, of course, during the AIDS crisis, we saw this over and over and over again. So thank you for making this. It's a very timely story. And I think if anybody has any doubt why we need marriage equality in this country, I think your story points it out clearly, particularly in the states like Alabama, South Carolina, Montana, Indiana, where people live like this and have to face this kind of discrimination. So thanks so much for making that film. Thank you. And I have to say that when I posted the YouTube video, you know, I was hearing from like thousands of people and, you know, growing up in Montana, we weren't educated in high school about the gay rights movement, so I, I didn't really no, just to the, the extent that there's so many people that have gone through something similar. I just, I imagine that it happened, but I didn't realize just how often it happened. And so for me, that's been an eye-opening ex experience, just hearing other people's stories. And, um, you know, I, I like to tell people, like, my story's not unique. And I think people, you know, they just don't even realize that it's happening. And so I'm just grateful that this film, it's not just about me, that it represents so many people. And I'm just grateful for you know, the people that, the trailblazers ahead of me that have got us to where we are now. And I'm just, things are changing, but I, I feel like it'd be nice if Tom was here and people like Tom could see what's happening. Because a lot of people that say that we should just be happy and grateful with where we are, that I'm like, that's, that's true, but and I think of people like Tom, and it's just unfortunate. How do you move on from this? Um, I, I, it can't define your life forever. What are you doing now to, to heal yourself? I mean, that's one of the questions I get often is, you know, how are you going to just move on with your life? But for me, not moving on would have been just staying depressed, and remaining silent. So for me, this is move, me moving on. It's just part of my, my journey. And when I, when I travel and I go to schools and I meet an 18-year-old boy that comes up to me and says that the film made him rethink suicide, how can I not just keep sharing my story? And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep sharing it for as long as, as it helps people. And, this journey has been so unpredictable that I don't really know exactly what happens next, but I'm just trying to, to just go with it and um, I, you know, trust that everything will work out the way that it's supposed to. Um, you had said something um, that I, I just found it so poignant and, and at the end of the movie, I think where, um, and it's kind of, I'm like, Andrew, you're sitting right here, but I'm gonna quote you anyway. Um, we, we have a, uh, there's a pastor named Reverend Frank Schaefer who has spoken here many times and he was a pastor that was defrocked uh, from the church because he performed the wedding of his gay son. And um, 
he, it's, it's, his, it's, Frank is a good name for him. He's a very, uh, you know, and, and, and such a loving man. But when he was here speaking and his message, uh, you two actually in two t totally separate situations had said something very similar. That Frank said he married his son because he loves his son and his son was in love and he's a pastor. You know, like it was pretty, you know, it was to him, it was kind of like, well. And uh, then after that, and then after he had to go to like church jury, this is a true story, and he got, they, they got found guilty, you know, and defrocked and all this stuff. It was then that he, he said, you know, because it was a hor horrible experience and horrible for him and his son and just, ugh, it was awful. It said his, what, he knew what was happening then to him. And he's like, well, I'm gonna be an activist and I'm gonna stand up and I'm not gonna shut up and I'm not gonna stop. And it was that like horrible thing that happened to him that he was like, and you had mentioned when you were going through the question, how do I move on, like what do I do? Is that, that there was this kind of a sentiment of, you know, we, what would Tom want you to do? And, the, and that perhaps this situation has put you in a position to speak. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, like I was saying earlier, I never have stood up for myself and I was always just ashamed of being who I am. And this, I still get nervous just getting up in front of people and um, it, it hasn't been easy, but it just feels like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I feel like, just sharing the story has given me a purpose and it's brought so much meaning to my life. And, you know, at some point, I, I probably won't travel and, and share the story, but I just feel like this moment right now in history, I'm just grateful that, that I have a story that is opening people's hearts and minds and it's helping them, you know, understand what it is that we're, you know, trying to, to achieve. Because I think people fear what they, obviously they don't understand and, for a lot of people out there that don't know anyone that's gay or they, they just have this idea of what gay relationships are like, I'm, just, I'm grateful that there's stories like this that they can, they can read about and just finally understand. Yeah. Your story is so poignant and beautiful, but inherently there's so much powerful political capital to the story. How have you noticed the film be positively politicized to change the argument or enhance it in the political world. That was one thing too when we made the documentary, we didn't want to make a, a political documentary because I think that that's where it, people just kind of shut off and we wanted to just simply tell a love story. Um, but I, I've heard from you know, lots of people that have used the film, you know, not just for like fundraisers, but at, at their church and you know, gay straight alliance groups. Um, just a lot of private screenings or even just people who buy the film and give it to someone um, that you know, they hope they will even just be open to watching it. And so as, as far as how it's being used, it's being used in a bunch of different ways and probably ways that I'll never even really know about. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful that, that people, when they watch it, that. Um, like I was saying, like it doesn't just feel like we're shoving something in their face and trying to tell them what to believe. We're just telling the story, and um, yeah, I think that was the right approach in this case. Yeah. I don't know if I answered your question. I'm like, I'm like, and then I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> How did you come up with the name bridegroom? Um, bridegroom is my partner Tom's last name. Real yeah, that was. There's some people that. Because in the film, you see the, the gravestone, and they thought that we added it, like, in post-production. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just, for me, it's, like, what are the odds of his last name being bridegroom? And when I met with the director, she, you know, asked me, she's like, Shane, you know his last name? I'm like, well, yeah. She's like, it's bridegroom. I'm like, mm-hmm. And then she's like, Do you, don't you see that this is something that's, that's bigger than you? It's bigger than Tom. And that was kind of the first moment that I had this, like, like chills, I'm like, wow, I never really thought about it. Um, so it's, it's kind of crazy. Did Tom's parents ever make you feel like you were doing something wrong or ever guess, second guess yourself and your judgment? Yeah, when Tom came out and they, they blamed me and as much as I'd like to think that I had the ability to turn Tom gay, um, I, 
that didn't work in high school with my, yeah. So, yeah, so, but it, for me, when I came out, my family was supportive. I'm the one that encouraged Tom to come out, assuming that his mom would be cool with it. I, I, I felt guilty about how they reacted, um, but they, they did blame me, so it made me just feel like an awful human being. But as time has gone on, I, you know, I, I realized that, that you know, that's their, their issue. And so I really just focused on you know, myself and our relationship and just being you know, grateful for what I had and, and hoping at some point that they would come around and his mom did. But I've never met his dad, so. Um, uh, if, for those of you that've seen the movie, Alex. Alex, she's, first of all, adorable. Um, Tom, uh, Tom passed away in a, in a tragic fall off of a rooftop. And he was with, at the time, he was with their, a gal named Alex, and they were just like goofing around taking photographs. But um, I, I'm just, I'm curious about how she is and how she's doing, because the, I can't imagine the amount of guilt, I mean, not only just being witness to something so horrific, but the, her, you know, the amount of guilt would be about like, uh, which, you know, isn't, she didn't do anything, but taking Tom away from you in the world. Yeah, I mean, with, with Alex, she's such an incredible human being and, like, the sweetest person ever. So for her to, to witness Tom falling and then to be with him, and it took, like, 20 minutes for an ambulance to arrive, it's just, there's so many, like, traumatic moments that I just, I can't imagine. And she really struggled with what happened, and we kind of reacted differently. She kind of just stuck to herself, and I tried to be more social. But I think for her and even all of us, the, the YouTube video, it kind of it was very healing. And it, it, it was kind of like the first moment that we felt like something positive had come from something so tragic. And she, she just got married a couple months ago, which is exciting. And uh, she just moved to North Carolina, which I think will be good for her. Just, you know, kind of something different and her new married life. So I'm, I'm excited for her. For the past year, I've just been traveling across the country to, to different schools and, and screening the documentary and speaking at fundraisers. And, and so that's kept me really busy. Like this fall, I have about like 20 different schools lined up. And so I think there's even schools now in like March and in April. So that's gonna keep me busy for a while. But other than that, yeah, that's, that pretty much takes up all my time, so. I, I'm like, schools, schools. I just, that was like, wow, okay, because we already, like, it's a rated R movie, and, and where I'm from, <laughs> in a hundred million years, this movie would never be brought to my school <laughs> when I was a kid. So I'm, I'm kind of excited and fascinated about, like, school, you mean, like, high schools? No, no, high school, sorry, like, universities. Okay, colleges and university. okay, because I was like, Wow, things have changed. <laughs> All right, that's, so you're doing like university tours. That's fascinating. Hi, Shane. Hi. On that same level, what's your life been like since October when this premiered on OWN and Netflix, etc.? You went from being a regular person to a public figure. What kind of impact has that had on your life? It's, I mean, it's, it's been like a surreal experience. Um, the one thing that just I'm blown away by every day is the amount of love and support that, that I receive. And, you know, I just, kind of like I was mentioning earlier, I just feel like I have a rare opportunity. And for whatever reason, people are listening to, to what I'm saying and they're you know, learning about the story. So it's, I feel like it's, it's a gift that I've been given. And so I'm just trying to, to share that so I'm just, I'm grateful for the platform that I've been given, and I'm just gonna try to make the most of it. Through your journey with um, screening this and going to schools and doing all that, uh, what are some of the lessons you've learned? Like by talking to people and by seeing how maybe people are changing after watching this or um, just exploring things that they've never really known? 
Yeah, I mean, at different screenings, there've, there've been these macho straight men that have come up to me and said that, wow, that they watched it and they finally get it. They finally understand and that they're no longer going to oppose you know, LGBT relationships. So that's pretty powerful. And you know, so for me, just traveling and screening it, I'm just constantly reminded from people who come up to me and share their stories that I just have to keep sharing my story. And it's, I think sometimes you know, when we're in a city like LA, we kind of forget what's going on in the rest of the world. And so for me, it's been really important to travel to small towns and, and, and meet, especially a lot of young people, because you know, I really just try to tell them, don't do what I did and spend so many years of your life just living for other people and just living in fear. Because I wish that in high school I, I didn't care about what other people thought. And I wish that I hadn't been afraid to hold Tom's hand in public. And um, you know, I just, I don't want people to, to be afraid of loving someone else. And so yeah. Shane, I'm a director of secondary education for a district here in Los Angeles County, and my question to you is, would you be prepared to come out and speak to a, a high school group? I'd be honored to. Yeah. I basically go where anyone asks me to go, so yeah, uh, that would be a huge honor. Yeah. And today was incredible, too. This, I haven't done anything like this with the film. Um, and so I just feel like it was a very special experience and I'm just grateful for, yeah, this is the first time I've ever been to church. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Um, but in LA, yeah, I, we were just talking about how we wanted, you know, we wanted to find a place that we could go to where you just feel welcome. Cause it's almost scary, the idea of going to church sometimes, but yeah, <laughs> yes. Not here, no, here it's like, I'm like, wow. I'm like, I want to come here every Sunday, but I'm never here, so, but yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I just want to tell you, I'm having to share his mic because the other one's wandering around. When I first walked in here to this church, because, you know, I, I, I grew up in the church. I just grew up in, you know, an environment that doesn't, isn't well suited to, you know, my beliefs and the fact that God loves everyone. I was completely freaked out when I came in here. I was like, what is going on here? Like, and I've spoken here several times, most of you have heard my story, but I, I, it makes me cry every time I think of it. But I just was looking around and there was, um, like, the, the, it, it there's just all these beautiful people and couples in every shape and size and, and type and brand of every kind of person anywhere. And I, my thought to myself on that day is I saw this is what God wants heaven to look like. And, I, it's just been like since that, and I've been here forever now, and I, I've been everybody here. I talk too much, um, but that was my first thought, and I thought, ah, oh, that's it, right there. And I know it's, it's when you first come in, it's yeah, yeah. We're, we're we'll freak you out for a minute. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm actually from right near Culver. and I, I didn't know Tom's family. I think I know some of his extended family. I think. Some of them might have actually been my cheerleading coach. But um, it's a very small community. And I had Bridegroom on my Netflix, and like my queue, and didn't know what it was. I was just like, oh, documentary, yay, I'll put that on my thing. And I had someone reach out to me from, from Culver. He worked at one of the funeral homes, and it may have been Randall's, I'm not sure. But he, um, he was there when all of this was going on. And he reached out to me through Facebook, and I ended up calling him, and he was so passionate about this documentary and basically was like, you need to stop what you're doing and watch this right now. And it was so like touching to have somebody from home that, that knew what was going on and was there through the, a lot of this, to be so passionate to tell me that I needed to watch it. And I just wonder how many other people back home he's telling that you have to watch this. It's in Redbox, it's in Netflix, you've got to see it. Um, and it made me curious if you've been able to speak in Indiana and any of those colleges like IU or Ball State, where you've run into people who knew Tom and have come up afterwards and spoke to you about how much this has impacted the community? Yeah, I haven't really met anyone, um, but I, I have received messages and emails from people um, who are even, you know, from his town. They just want me to know that 
that they're not like Tom's family. They felt like really passionate about saying, we're not, we're not all like that. But, and I never thought that everyone in you know, places like Indiana is that close-minded, but um, I haven't screened the film in Indiana. And there's a part of me that's a little afraid of that, but um, about who shows up. But for, for people that don't know Culver, it's a military academy where Tom went to high school and Tom's mom still works there. And so I feel like it's, it's probably a little awkward, especially when the, first, when the film first came out, because a lot of people were talking about it. But um, it's, I'm just glad that people even there, that they're supporting the film. Because again, it just kind of reminds me that this is the right thing, kind of like with his other family members supporting it. So yeah. But that's yeah, crazy that you have a connection there. Yeah. It just shows how small the world is. but. You mentioned something earlier about um, Tom's mom, and my question is, you know, do you still keep in touch with her? I think you mentioned you, you did, but how is, she, how is she doing now? Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly how his mom's doing. You know, I, I've talked to his sister, but it's almost one of those things now where they don't really even talk about Tom, just because it automatically makes them think about all of this. But, you know, I, I hope that that his mom is in a better place. And I, I don't know what it's like to be a parent and to lose a child, so I really try to be understanding and respectful of that. Um, but yeah, I, I wish her and her husband the best, and I, um, I just hope that at some point they can kind of realize that they didn't really honor their son and I don't think that it's, it's too late for them to, to turn the situation around. And they could really help a lot of people and a lot of other parents out there. Um, so I hope that that happens at some point. Just so you know, I reached out to him three months ago. His schedule is so busy, everyone. Today was the only Sunday he had available for this. So again, thank you for taking the time out oh, of your schedule. Thank, thank you. And your friends for being here. This oh, thank you. And thank you for Polly Perrette for doing this. Thank you, Polly. Thank you, Joey. And thanks, thanks all y'all for sticking around. And, and to you, Shane, um, not only thank you for being here, but uh, you know, oftentimes in life we don't realize if we're just d doing our thing how unbelievably courageous that we are. And you are unbelievably courageous. And, and we just have so much admiration and love for you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you.